Hi there, we're going to review how to solve practical problems. So before we even begin to think about a solution, what we need to do is read through the problem twice. So the problem we have here is written in purple. Allison paid for three school lunches at $3 each. She gave the cashier $20. How much change will she receive? Let's read it one more time. Allison paid for three school lunches at $3 each. She gave the cashier $20. How much change will she receive? So when we're following the Rice method, our first step is to restate the important facts and rewrite the question as a statement. So let's go through the problem. What are the important facts that we already know? Well, we do know that she bought three school lunches And we know that each lunch costs three dollars. And then we know she paid with a twenty dollar bill or twenty dollars altogether. And then we need to think about the question how much change will she receive? So now we need to think about how to write that as a statement. So I'm going to think about, if I were to put that into a sentence, I could say, Allison received blank for change. Now I can think about this blank is what I am trying to answer. Okay, we know she bought three school lunches, each lunch cost $3, and she paid $20 to the cashier. So now we can think with those facts, we can fill in the blank for this last statement. Allison received blank for change. Now our second step, I, illustrate or you can identify the steps of the problem that you would need to solve. So let's go back to the problem again. And let's think about the steps involved. So Allison paid for three school lunches at $3 each. Then she gave the cashier $20. So how much change will she receive? Well, I can visualize that this problem is going to take multiple steps. So first, I know I need to multiply three times three because she has three school lunches at $3 each. Now I'm going to go ahead and use a variable here because I don't know what that product is yet. I'm not trying to solve, I'm just identifying the steps. So I'm going to give this um, a variable of L for her lunches. Now my second step is going to use subtraction. So I'm going to subtract we have 20 minus L. Remember, we don't know what that value is yet because we haven't solved it. Um, and I can give this a value of C for change. <clears throat> now that I've identified that this problem uses two steps, I can think about how can I illustrate and draw this as a picture or model. I'm gonna use a bar model for this one. So if I use a bar to represent the whole which is going to be how much money Allison paid the cashier. So I know that all of this is going to be equal to $20. I also know that she bought three school lunches for $3 each. But I don't know how much change she got back. So this helps show that I'm going to do three times three and then whatever that product is, I will subtract it from our whole of $20 paid to the cashier. And then we will be able to figure out this missing number of how much change she will get back. Now that we've visualized the problem by illustrating a picture and we have identified the steps that we need to do, we're ready to go ahead and solve the problem. So let's look down here at C, calculate. So not only are we solving the problem, but we also need to show our work. 
I know by fifth grade, many of us are comfortable with trying to do this in our head, but by showing work, when we get to our evaluate, we might find we made a mistake and our work can show us where that mistake might have happened. So I'm gonna show the work for this problem. I know my first step is to do three times three. I know that fact, three times three equals nine. My second step, I'm gonna do 20 minus the value I had here, which was nine. And then I get 11. Great, so now I know that she should receive $11 of change. But let me go to evaluate. Let's check our calculation. So what we can do when we check our calculation is to work backwards. So if I say, oh, she's going to get $11 of change, uh, and we add it to the $9 she spent on her lunches, we do get back to a total of $20 that she paid the cashier. So let's think now, does our answer make sense? It does make sense because 11 is less than 20. So it makes sense to be changed that she could get back. Does our answer need a label? Actually, yes, this does, because if I just look at the number 11, that doesn't tell me very much. Is it 11 cents, $11? Maybe she's getting 11 dimes back, but the reader won't, won't know unless you label your answer. So I'm gonna go ahead and say um, that she should get $11 back or using our dollar symbol 11. You could even write it as 11 decimal point zero zero because we know that there's no change on this problem. And let's think back, does this answer the question? Well, right now I just have a value of $11, but I haven't actually said what it represents. So we can help our reader out by writing our answer in a sentence. So let's go back. We said Allison received blank for change. So let's go ahead and write that in an answer or in a sentence. So I'm going to write, um, I'm just gonna fill it right here in the space that I have left. Um, so Allison received $11 for change. Great, I've really thought about this problem and I've used all the steps for the RICE method to really check that I'm thoroughly answering the problem and I know I'm processing it. Because sometimes when we're having to read these story problems, they get a little confusing. But now I can confidently and comfortably say that Allison will receive $11 for change. If you have any questions about the Rice Method, go ahead and reach out to your teacher and we'll help you out.